Hey guys, welcome back to a new video, which will be about the important concept of activities, which is a really important concept that you should understand when you want to make apps, because you will have to do with activities all the time as an Android developer. And what is an activity? An activity is basically just a single screen on your device. And it's actually nothing more than a Kotlin class that represents that activity. And inside of that class, we need to define how our specific screen should behave in which situations. And if you take a more precise look at that activity class here, you may notice that it inherits from app compat activity. App compat activity is a class in the Android framework that describes what an activity is. And we inherit from that class to take over that behavior and to make our own activity out of that. So as you can see, Android Studio automatically inserted that onCreate function, which is actually defined in that app compat activity class. But because we inherit from that, we can use that function and implement it in our main activity class. And the onCreate function is the function that is called whenever this activity is created. So you can say that this is basically the entry point for that activity. So to say the, the main function of Android. And if we create another activity, that other activity would also have its own onCreate function. And also you may have noticed that setContentView function here that is just automatically inserted by Android Studio whenever we create a new activity. And that means that it tells Android Studio which layout file belongs to this activity. And as you can see, we refer to that layout file with r.layout.activityMain. And R stands for resources. So if we take a look in our res folder here and go into our layout folder, then this is basically just um, the R for resources, then layout for the layout folder and activity main for that particular layout file. So if we click on that and go on that design tab below here, then you can see the layout for our particular main activity. And that set content view function does nothing more than just telling Android Studio that this layout file belongs to this activity. Another important concept of activities is the activity stack. Whenever we start a new activity, it is pushed on top of the activity stack. So when we click on go to second activity here, then we start a new activity, which is second activity. And that new activity is pushed onto the, the activity stack. If we click on go to third activity, then that third activity is pushed onto that stack of, um, onto that activity stack. And now when that user of that app here clicks on that back button and navigates back, then the activity that is on top of that stack is popped and the activity that is that was below that top activity is now on the top so that is now the current activity. And that is basically how Android remembers um, where it should return to when the user presses the back button. Another important concept of activities is the activity life cycle. Activities have a life cycle that you should understand roughly. And this life cycle describes the different states an activity can be in and when that state changes. So as you can see, whenever an activity starts, then the first thing that happens is that the onCreate function is called. And this is basically the function where you want to instantiate your object and initialize those variables that are needed when that activity just starts. And when that activity becomes visible to the user, then the so-called onStart function is called. After the onStart function, the onResume function is called and Whenever the onResume function is called, that means that the activity now starts to interact with the user. And we know that at this point, the activity is on top of the activity stack. And after the onResume function is called, we can be 100% sure that our activity is fully running. When an activity loses foreground state, onPause is called. You can think of that like 
at your PC when you open a window and then click into another window, then the other window has the focus, but you can still see what happens in the previous opened window. And the same way, activities can be in the foreground or in the background, and you can still see what happens in that activity. And whenever an activity gets into the background, then on pause is called. And when the activity now gets the user's focus again, then it won't just recreate that activity. Instead, it will just jump into that on resume function again. After on pause, when the activity is no longer visible to the user, on stop is called. So that means that either a new activity was started from our activity or that our current activity was destroyed by the system. And when apps with higher priority than your app need memory, then it can happen that the system will kill your app and the lifecycle will start with onCreate again if the user never gets back to your activity. So in that case, we cannot just jump right into on resume or on start. In that case, we have to recreate that whole activity. And whenever that happens that the system kills your app process and you, for example, need to save some data in your app, then you should do that in the on pause function instead of the on stop function because on pause is guaranteed to be called. On stop is not guaranteed to be called. Because of that, you should always save your data in on pause. If your app is in the stopped state and the user navigates back to it, then first on restart is called and after that it jumps right away to on start in the life cycle. And finally there is the on destroy function that gets called when your app is finishing. So that means that for example if the user presses the back button in your activity then it gets destroyed or when it just gets destroyed by the system then on destroy gets called. So this is the complete activity lifecycle. I know this is very complicated and you don't have to know all this from memory, even I don't, but I think you should have heard of that, that this activity lifecycle exists in Android and that there are actually several functions that you can overwrite in your activities. I will show you how to do that in a sec. And yeah, just know that this exists and that there are several states and if you need to know which states follows after the other, then you can just Google it. So back in Android Studio, I want to show you how to actually overwrite those lifecycle functions because only on create is visible here, but we can actually overwrite the other ones. So for that, just make a little space here and press Control O. And then you will see a ton of functions that can be overridden for every activity. And here you can just type whatever function you want to override. So for example, on pause, then you type on pause and there it is. Just press enter here and Android Studio will insert the on pause function. Currently that override fun is underlined in gray because we don't really override it. It's just, it's just the standard implementation of on pause. But if we, for example, print something here, print line on pause, then this gray line disappears and we have successfully overridden on pause. And whenever that lifecycle goes to that on pause state, then this code inside of that on pause function will be executed. And if you don't like the way of doing that with that control O option, then you can simply just type that function you want to override. So you type override function and then for example on restart and then Android Studio is smart enough to um, show you that function. Just press enter and there's the implementation. I won't implement every function here now. I just wanted to show you how to actually overwrite them and put your code in them. Yes, that's everything I wanted to show you in this video. I hope it got clear because it might be confusing for you as a beginner, but if you have any questions, then don't mind asking them in the comments so I can answer them. And also please leave a like if you like this video and comment below what you think about that, if there is something I can improve on. And yeah, have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.